This edition of the Ridley Report is brought to you by... People who are there uh, would have the option, you know, if, if an eviction is going down, people who are there would have the option. They, they don't just have to stay there or leave. They could leave slowly, backwards. They could retreat just to the periphery and then document what's going on the, on the periphery. That is going to be just as interesting as what's happening at the house. So you, you retreat to the area that you're allowed to be and film what's going on there. That will be interesting. You ideally will want a mix, and having a large number of people will help with this, but you want a mix of different people doing all the different kinds of media that you can do. So you've got one person there that's just concentrated, just concentrating on getting all the facts and getting them out. Maybe someone else who's just concentrating on collecting facts for history. Someone else who's broadcasting live video. Another person who's doing taped video. Someone who's documenting the scene from a distance, slightly distant, slight distance anyway, on a tripod outside. Someone who's making update calls to Porcupine 411. A person whose main job is to inform the mainstream press locally. Someone else who focuses more nationally. And the reason I say this is because it's two different kinds of coverage you want. And you want, you want positive coverage locally. But if it's national, it doesn't matter. Uh, so, you, you know, the more of a stink you make... It doesn't matter whether you're nice or whether you get good coverage because coverage that these guys get in Maine or especially in Texas or Colorado, the important thing there is just the quantity of coverage, not the quality. You want as many people to hear the term free keen as possible who are out there. I'm not sure, actually. I think today specifically, but I'm pretty sure they've been doing it bit by bit every day. But in, but in a local sense, you want to look like the good guy as much as possible. And so there, uh, the, the quality of the coverage matters a little bit more. So it's two different kinds of PR. Uh, one thing I tried at, at, at an, a sort of civil disobedience event that I did was handing out like a leaflet that explained to people in one page all the different options that they had, all the different things that could be done that would be helpful to create a little bit of a division of labor. And people actually went and did do that. It was the only event I've ever hosted where that actually happened. And it was just a matter of writing it down and making sure I wasn't ordering anyone to do anything. It's just like, here's 20 different, or it was really more like 10 different positions you could fill in this particular mission. Oh, there could be people who are... Um, who assign themselves, uh, basically, to uh, uh, protest in different parts of the city. So say something's going down at the CAC, well, maybe that's the moment where there should be a couple protesters out in front of the police department. But they don't, not everyone has to be in the same location. And if there's enough, there's, if there's already 50 or 100 people at the CAC area, then you start to get a law of diminishing returns and you can do more good by peaceably striking elsewhere. Or am I just am I just dreaming here? Is this going to go down and in reality, like so many liberty endeavors, as a fizzle, as a shadow of what it could have been because people didn't prepare for it or do even half the things that they could have done or because unnecessary alienation takes place? Oh, here's another idea that would be important, and there's three years to make it happen. Uh, it sure would be nice if somebody owned or had access to one of the homes that is near the CAC. As much as the CAC folks have not really done what they probably should have to be popular in the neighborhood, there's probably somebody in the neighborhood that will let you into their house and let you videotape through the window and so forth, monitor the scene from a safe nearby location, Maybe by that time, a free stater will own one of the houses nearby. 
Anyway, these are sort of the options that are specific to this situation, kind of. There are a lot more options and options that you could do from anywhere in the country, anywhere in the world, uh, that are a little bit more general in nature. If you're just really inspired by this thing that Ian's doing, and I think people probably should be, is for all its flaws, you'll want to look into all the different ways that you can help and then do the one that's most fun for you, best, most efficient. So check the video description. I've, written, I've got a, you know, a growing list of all the different ways that you can pitch in for liberty activism in New Hampshire, uh, even if you're not here. Click the link. Do one of them. I do. Oh, other options, I guess, would include uh, lawsuits against any officials that overstep their bounds, and they will in the process of go, uh, going after Ian. Finding more attorneys who'll get on board. The, the ones they've got are probably pretty overworked and underpaid. Establishment of a letter to the editor posse that writes letters to the editor about this. Uh, people who will call talk radio uh, about this locally and nationally. Maybe someone who's willing to submit a piece of legislation that uh, addresses some of Ian's concerns and many, many people's concerns about property taxes. But what am I going to do? Ultimately, it comes down to that. What am I going to do? What are you going to do? And, well, I'm doing something right now by, I guess, I'm looking at the length of this narration. I've probably just created three or four separate videos about this subject, which will draw more attention and uh, maybe result in a better outcome for the whole thing. I would, I think, like to probably be there when the trouble happens or for part of the period of time in which trouble might happen. It'll depend on what else I've got going, but I'd certainly consider it. Yeah, I, I, maybe I shouldn't be at the CAC itself, but maybe just in Keen for a month or something like that. If I had to summarize what what I think needs to happen, it's probably in in two basic things. Number one, improved level of approval by the neighbors and division of labor. When the moment comes, everyone should have a sense of what they can best do that isn't going to duplicate everyone else's effort. I also forgot to mention that if even half of these things start to come true, even half of my suggestions, you will get infiltrated. So there will be a government person inside the building, maybe two or three, if this thing really, if this endeavor really starts to light on fire. <laughs> Figur figuratively speaking only. It's my happy duty to report to you that this edition of the Ridley Report is brought to you by the New Hampshire Liberty Alliance. You cannot do this at the State House without hitting one of these guys. They're all over the place fighting for your freedom, but they need your help. Please join them at nhliberty.org. Oh, and make that us. Join us because I'm a member. NHLiberty.org